Hey everyone, and welcome back to my new old house. Today we're going to talk about something that's a little more general than the laundry chute, um, but definitely associated with a certain time period in American history. If you have a house that has built-in bookcases or drawers or benches, you've got something that is referred to in the architecture and real estate world as built-ins. They're handy little space-saving features that I was thrilled to find in my house. So here in my house, I have this handy dresser right outside the bathroom, this neat little built-in bookcase, another handy closet with a built-in set of drawers here, and a few other odds and ends and alcoves throughout the house. So while built-ins have been around for a long time, and while they never really went away, there was one period in American history where they truly seemed to be all the rage. The arts and crafts movement began in England in the mid-19th century during the Victorian era, eventually making its way to America around the turn of the 20th century. This movement, which began in fine and decorative arts, was a reaction to the Industrial Revolution in England and the fear of society becoming over-mechanized, over-stylized, too reliant on machines and less reliant on real human beings. Therefore, it shone a light on the value of hand craftsmanship on pre-industrial forms of artistic creation and design, which of course were done without the aid of modern machines. This movement naturally extended into the realm of architecture in America in the early 20th century. One man who played a big part in popularizing this movement in American house style was a man named Gustav Stickley. In his publication, The Craftsman, a magazine that began in 1901 and ran until 1916, he celebrated the work and style of people like William Morris, a British textile designer who was considered by many to be a pioneer of this artistic movement. The entire movement focused intensely on the beauty and wonder of art, carpentry, whatever it may be, that was produced by the human hand. To quote William Morris, have nothing in your houses that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. In The Craftsman, Stickley and the other writers and editors provide a blueprints for homes that came to be called the Craftsman style. Common features of this architectural style include low-pitched gable roofs which extended past the exterior walls of the house, exposed beams and rafters, decorative brackets and lintels, thick tapered columns, and often a big front porch. The interior of the house typically included thick wooden trim around doors and windows, boxed beams along the ceiling, and of course, built-ins. Some examples of built-ins that were common with the craftsman style home include built-in benches in the entryway, also by windows in the dining room, Buffets, china cabinets, and sideboards, also in the dining room. Bookshelves and desks in dens and libraries, and often a fireplace with benches on the sides. This fireplace arrangement has actually been around since the medieval period and is called an inglenook. I recommend checking out the history of the inglenook as it is pretty interesting. Sometimes there was a telephone niche with a fold-out seat and everything. Breakfast nooks were common with built-in tables and benches, and Murphy beds first appeared during this period as well. Right here in St. Cloud, we actually have a whole neighborhood featuring homes built in the Craftsman style. And that is the Pantown neighborhood in the area where the Electrolux building still sits around 33rd and Veterans Drive. Obviously, you can't go inside to check out the built-ins that may or may not still be in there, but just by looking at these houses from the outside, you can get a really good impression of what the craftsman style is. My house was built a little later than the period in which craftsman homes were all the rage, but the practicality of built-ins lingered, and you can find homes of all periods and styles with their own built-ins. In fact, today, built-ins are having a bit of a moment, and many people are either adding them to their existing homes or are building new homes with those built-ins once again. And the cool thing is, once you know the history, you can look at a modern built-in and see its connection to the past. 
So there you have it, a very brief history of the craftsman style of homes and the built-ins that were often found in them. If you want to do some more research on the craftsman style and the arts and crafts movement itself, all very interesting stuff and I highly recommend it. Thank you guys for coming to another episode of My New Old House and we'll see you next time.